Coming up on Bobcat Breakdown, we're officially in the midst of the winter sports season. The basketball teams got things kicked off this past weekend at the TD Bank Sports Center while the hockey squads found a, their own fair share of success. We've got you covered here. It's time for the breakdown. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's edition of the Bobcat Breakdown. I'm John Alba, joined alongside by Justin Nobre here in Studio 125, and it's time to get things started. Now, the ice may have been laid down at the TD Bank Sports Center, but the hardwood heated up Friday night. Quinnipiac men's basketball and Yale faced off in Game 2 of the Connecticut Six Classic Friday night at Lender Court, and it became an instant classic. It took two overtimes, but the Bobcats bested the Bulldogs 88-85 behind a 34-point performance from Zaid Hurst to pick up their first win of the season. So, with his career night, Justin, I've got to ask, is Zaid Hurst the most important player on this team? I have to agree with it, uh, John. I mean, he had 34 points, like you said, 11 rebounds, 5 assists. He had a huge game. He was just making plays on his own. Um, and he's, he also sets an example for the players on and off the court. I mean, he's the only captain in Tom Moore's seven years here, so that has to speak well. And I, and I think that's a good point that you bring up because, I mean, Tom Moore has had his fair share of prolific players like Azatam, Justin Ruddy, James Johnson, to name exactly. uh, just a few. And to be able to name someone your captain, you have to have a lot of faith in it. And we see a lot of basketball coaches will often name several captains. Right. Uh, but Zaid Hurst, as you said, is the only one. And... We talked to Coach Moore in the press conference after the game on Friday, and he said, Zaid Hurst, he eats right. He plays right. He doesn't put anything harmful into his body, right, make exactly. of that what you will. But, I, I mean, you got to think, at some point, someone is going to recognize that Zaid Hurst is a little more important than the second-tier player on this team. Yeah, I think maybe it just might be his size. He's not the biggest player on the court, but... He's, he's definitely needs to get more. But he's, I mean, you can make the argument he's possibly the most athletic player on that team right now. I think so. I'd say so, yes. And, I mean, the MAC names him all second team. Yeah. And, and we're going to talk about the one player on Quinnipiac in just a few minutes who was all first team for that matter. But you got to think that at some point someone's going to come to a Quinnipiac basketball game expecting to see someone, and then Zaid Hurst is going to be that guy that kind of steps out. I mean, if you're watching that game, Zaid Hurst, step back jumper after step back jumper. And then eventually he starts going on a free throw spill. Uh, right. he, he wasn't perfect from the line by any means, 60% to be exact. But there came a point where he's just like, screw it. <laughs> I'm not going to worry about scoring. I'm going to set the high screen. I'm going to do what I can to open up the court for my teammates. Right, exactly. He, I don't know. I thought he was definitely the MVP of that game, at least in my opinion. And I mean, I mean this is just the first game of the season, obviously, exactly. for Quinn Jack. Uh, coming up, you've got Hartford, you've got Albany, you've got Vermont, and then immediately coming up on Tuesday, you have LaSalle. And LaSalle, if people can remember back to last he year's does. contest, that was on ESPN's 24 Hours of College Basketball. Right. Not this year, but at the same time, you got to say to yourself, going up against an A-10 team, this is your chance to put yourself on more of a national spotlight compared to going against some other mid-major talent. You're exactly right. It's going to be a huge test for them. And, and it's, it's interesting to me, Justin, uh, because Hurst, when you talk to, when you talk to Zaid Hurst, he's, he's the kind of guy who he'll, he'll take his own fair share of credit, but he's going to dish that credit elsewhere. Right. You know, he'll talk about Evan Conti dropping 13 points. He'll talk about Kasim Chandler uh, distributing the ball even better. Uh, you got to think that that's the kind of player you want around your locker room. Exactly. This is why he's the captain. He makes players around him better. We'll have to move past Zaid Hurst at that point. Okay, so um, John, other than Hurst, who in your opinion had the second biggest impact on Friday night? You know, it was like basketball socialism out there on the court for the Quinnipiac, Justin. Uh, you, you had multiple players in double-digit points. Uh, but for me, it all boils down to Justin Harris. And this was a question that a lot of people had on their minds going into this game because Ike Azatam leads the program. And I don't know about you, I think Ike Azatam was maybe the best player in Quinnipiac basketball history. Uh, a force offensively, defensively a monster, and was relatively solid down the stretch as well. Had the experience of playing uh, in important playoff games. Didn't make the NEC championship game, but he was able to make the semifinals in his first year 
against Robert Morris. You have to find a way to replace that. Exactly. And Quinnipiac comes into this season with a, its own fair share of, of forwards. I don't want to say a plethora, but none of whom are established. You have Chase Daniels coming in, who was one of the first to sign his letter of intent for Quinnipiac. The big name that everyone was talking about was Sam Dingba. Now, Sam Dingba is a freshman, and Tom Moore doesn't normally start freshman, right. Justin. Dingba gets a start, gets into foul trouble early. Justin Harris, the senior who, in my opinion, hasn't really gotten a whole lot of respect uh, from the coaching staff, not on an individual basis, but in the grand, grand spectrum of things here, comes into the game, 12 points, and forget the points, he was a force out there on the court. Exactly. But are you concerned that he only had two rebounds that game? No, because... The, he wasn't brought in to rebound in that game. He was brought in to set the screens. He was brought in to create isolation. That's exactly what he did. You know, you have a guy like Usman Drame who you know is going to crash the boards. Right. Okay. Uh, and Quinnipiac has never been a team that's been concerned about crashing the boards consistently among the nation's leaders in that. Exactly. But Justin Harris had to step in as some sort of scoring force because look at what happened with Azatam. Uh, Azatam was the leading scorer for the nth degree for that team. So you have to get some kind of productivity out of, out of Justin Harris. And he exactly did that. He came in, as you said, he went 5 for 6. He um, shot 83% and he only had 20 minutes to play. It was outstanding. Well, and that's exactly what it is. You mentioned the minutes. And, and when you're a player like Justin Harris, you have to make the most of your minutes. And it's funny because in the press conference, uh, he was talking about how, you know, I got to hustle for the ball. I got to make right, the yeah. most of my minutes. Yeah. And I followed that up. I said, well, did you earn minutes? Uh, did you earn more minutes? And he, he kind of shrugged it off. But after the press conference, Tom Moore was talking about, okay, um, he earned my respect. Uh, he practiced hard. He played hard. But he wouldn't go much further than that. And I asked him, well, did he earn a starting spot on Tuesday against LaSalle? And he goes, well, you know, I think the media, I think the uh, players' girlfriends care more about <laughs> Uh, who's starting on right. the court. And, you know, I, I guess you can back that sentiment up to a degree, but you got to think, being in the starting lineup has to be important for a player. Oh, definitely. It's definitely a huge boost of confidence. A exactly. It's a boost of confidence. And, and for a guy who's a senior who hasn't played a whole lot in his playing career here at Quinnipiac, right. uh, you, you got to imagine that there has to be some sort of pride taken in that. But anyway, we'll move on, and we'll talk about the man that everyone has come to see. Usman Drame may have caught all the attention of the MAC when he was named to the conference first team this year, but he was caught sleeping twice in the final minutes of the second half with an errant behind-the-back pass and an intercepted outlet toss. Both, in, both instances that almost led to Quinnipiac dropping the game. Justin, my question, what do we equate this to? Why, why did he make these mental errors? This guy's supposed to be one of the best players in the conference. I'm not too concerned. It's only the first game, but... I believe it's due to the absence of Giovanni McLean. I think some, I think some of the seniors are going to have to take a bigger role this year. I mean, he did score 13 points and have 15 rebounds. He, there was points in the game where but, he tried but where to But where does McLean come into the situation there? And McLean is a, is a guard who hasn't stepped on the court at Quinnipiac. I think just his point production. But, but there was no guaranteed point production. He's never played a game for Quinnipiac. I think but he was just like highly, highly tutored coming into this year. I mean, he was definitely highly touted, but what, what I don't understand is, though, what does that have to do with Usman Drame's mental lapses? I just think the senior, him and along with the other seniors, they believe that they need to do more for this team to succeed, okay. succeed this season. Okay, no, and I mean, I can, I can get where you're coming from on that, but, I mean, Usman Drame, this is a guy, again, picked all Mac first team. There are NBA scouts coming to Quinnipiac games. There's exactly. someone there from the Jazz uh, they are coming there to watch Usman Drame. You can't be making those mental mistakes. Now, Tom Moore told us after the press conference that uh, Usman Drame is only at about 75% uh, health-wise. Keep in mind, he had the torn meniscus. He had that repaired. Uh, but maybe it's fatigue? I, I, I don't know. I mean, does that play into effect? Does health play into effect in that I case? I think so, and I also think you mentioned the scouts coming in. I think he might be trying to... You think there's pressure? Yes, I think there's pressure, and he's trying to do more than he usually does to gain attention from the scouts. I, I don't know. I mean, for me, th this is a mid-major basketball player. You know, the, the expectations are not through the roof. You're supposed to come in, you're supposed to play your position. Usman Drame last year caught the attention of many other guys, but i got to tell you what, there's two Usman Dramas that we've seen over the past couple of years. There's the Usman Drame who's consistently productive, is crashing the boards nonstop. He makes up 
uh, for his stamina, with his length. He's got a beautiful touch. We've seen that. But we've also seen the Usman Drame who gets four fouls right away. We'll just have to see where it equates to as we go forward in the season. All right, and that leads us to our first break. Coming back, we'll be discussing both hockey teams' weekends in our lightning round. Don't change your channel. You're not going to want to miss this. Welcome to A Sheer Sensation, North Haven's premier cosmetology service, located at 140 Washington Avenue, minutes from Hamden. We offer an array of services, from basic cuts and colors to lash extensions and formaldehyde free keratin treatments. We also provide hair chalk and styling for men. When you spend $60, your Q card will get you 10% off. Call us at 203 239 6477 to make your next appointment at a sheer sensation. Wake up, Quinnipiac! It's the morning after! The men's hockey team had a huge weekend as they defeated Union 4-3 and Rensselaer 3-1. Travis St. Dennis also had a big weekend as he scored game-winning goals in both games and he also registered his first career hat-trick in the game against Rensselaer. John, after starting the season 0-2-1, the Bobcats have now won six straight games. By yourself, can the Bobcats keep this hot streak going? I'll tell you, I remember having the conversations with Q30 Sports' own Mark Spillane earlier in the year. And then he said to me, this is probably going to be a team that's going to get off to a slow start. There's a ton of freshmen on this squad. Uh, they're going to get off to a slow start. Everyone's going to overreact, and then they're going to finally find their way. Right. Well, it certainly exactly seems like happened. that's how things exactly. are playing out. There was this goaltending scare with Gartig and Sean Lawrence, which we'll talk about in a little bit. But it's, it's not for me as much a matter of that, Justin. For me, it's a matter of who's ahead. Uh, and St. Lawrence is coming up. And Quinnipiac has had his fair share of struggles against St. Lawrence in the past. Uh, there was coming off the year where they made the national championship game. Uh, they had that long streak of un, that unbeaten streak, uh, their letdown game against St. Lawrence. The year right. after, big streak again, letdown game, St. Lawrence. It's been their trip tonight. It has. Now, of course, they went out on the road and just creamed them, ain't nothing. Uh, but uh, for me, it just it boils down to the St. Lawrence attack. Uh, this is a team that ranks seventh offensively in the country. Uh, defensively, they're about par for par. What do you think? Um, I think, I think the Bobcats will come out victorious in this game. But um, as you said, they are the deepest team in scoring. They have 20 different players with the goal. I think it comes down to uh, the goaltending of Gartag. He's been really hot lately. He's had a uh, goals against average of 1.50 and a save percentage of 935. So I think it boils down to his goaltending. Yeah, I, I, I do think there's other factors to that, though. Uh, you know... A, a goaltender is only as good as his defense is. So the defense needs to be there in some degree. So let's talk about the goaltender. Uh, buy or sell, Michael Gartig has returned, and I don't just mean physically. He's been on fire as of late, and he's posted two shutouts in the last four games. He's allowed just four goals in that span. Justin, are you buying Gartig as the goaltender for the rest of the season? I'm definitely buying this one. Um, He's, he's looked like a new man since the first three games of the season. His rebound controls looks a lot better. His side-to-side um, -side lateral movement in the crease has definitely improved. I like what I've seen from him so far. And he also has the fifth most saves in the ECAC right now with 177. So he has been facing a lot of shots also, and he's been up to the test. This is a guy. I, I mean, we've seen this happen in professional sports, too, where you have the highly touted starter. And, and Gartig was good last year. Gartig was not amazing right. last year. Um, Gartig had a ton of hype coming in to his sophomore campaign last year. Played well. Comes into his junior year, and he's supposed to be the big man on campus. And sometimes you need that person breathing down your neck. Sean Lawrence came in. Didn't play great. In fact, he cost the team in a, in a pretty significant letdown tie. Right, exactly. uh, but sometimes you just need that scare to get you in the rhythm, uh, to establish that biorhythm. And I think that's what it did uh, for Gartig. Gartig, 25th in the country right now in goals against average. Uh, you got to think that as long as the team steps it up defensively, again, they're in the upper tier, he's going to do all right. He's going to be okay. But 
I worry Justin more so about his late game performance and his early game performance. Quinnipiac has been fine in holding games down midway through, but you gotta come out fast out of the gate and be in a rock in that net. Right. I think the team's gonna have to help him out. I think they're gonna have to apply pressure for most of the first period, let Gartek settle in, give him some easy shots to get settled in with the game. Like try to keep them outside, shots from the point, shots from the sideboard. Let him ease into the game so he could have that um streak going in. And I mean the offense has to be there obviously as well, which for Quinnipiac is neither here nor there. So we'll see where that goes. Right. And John, the women's team has also been on a, on fire lately as they have not lost a game all season. Right now they're below Clarkson in the standings. By yourself, will the game against Clarkson have the biggest impact on the Bobcat season? You know, Clarkson obviously just the defending national champion. Uh, they did it right here, in fact, at High Point Solutions Arena here in beautiful scenic Hampton, <laughs> Connecticut. Uh, Clarkson's a good team. Uh, now, now for me, that's obviously the game you look out for. Uh, McAuley, Mercer, Bannon, the trio right there, offensive studs. For me, though, I'm more looking at the game against Princeton. Now, Princeton is actually technically ahead of Clarkson in the pairwise, uh, and they've shared common victories alongside Quinnipiac, Penn State being one of those. Um, I view this more as a letdown trap game. Traveling partners, you never know what's going to happen out there on the ice. I, I worry about something like that if I'm Quinnipiac. You need to take one game at a time. You've got Princeton coming up on November 25th, so you go, obviously got to worry about Clarkson first. Right. But I look at Princeton. Who do you look at? Actually, I'm going to go with Harvard here. They, um, they're a team that I feel like is going to surprise a lot of people this year. They have uh, Emerin Smashmeyer, who's uh, she was Canadian. She was Team Canada's goalie for the Four Nations Cup, and she's been playing outstanding. I think she's better than Clarkson's goalie, uh, Shea Tiley. And then we have uh, Maya Dench, who's also one of the better forwards in the ACAC. I mean, Harvard's only had played four games, and she has five goals and seven but, points. But that's the thing. It's also only been four games. So, so is that something that's more just a, a nature of the beast where someone gets hot out of the gate, or you think that's something that's going to be sustained? I mean, I th for what I've seen, I think... I think more, the more games you go through, the more experience you get, and the hot, like, just... The I mean, you've got you to remember, just that Quinnipiac's got one of the hottest defenses in the country right now. It's the top-ranked defense in the country. they got the hottest goaltender who's allowed three goals on 96 shots this right, year. Right, exactly. So you're pretty good uh, in that regard. But let's stick with women's sports here. Uh, T.T. Sianferrano has been a big impact player for the women's hockey team this year, despite her off weekend. But on the other end, Justin, Jen Fay is among the most hyped freshmen to ever play for Tr Trisha Fabry's squad. So, Justin, by season's end, who makes the biggest impact on their squad, Sian Ferrano or Fay? I'm definitely going to have to go see Sian Ferrano. I mean, she's leading the Bobcats in points as a freshman. She has seven goals and seven assists, and she's also plus 13. So, you know, good things are happening when she's on the ice. And she's doing this on a team that's very good and very deep. I mean... All these other players, Nicole Costa, Nicole Connery, they're all very good players, and she's leading the Bobcats in points. So, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to take anything away from Sian Ferrano because I think she's absolutely, hands down, the most important player on that team right now, especially having to replace a scoring force like Kelly Babstock. Everyone's looking out for Sian Ferrano. But I look at Jen Fay. She comes from this highly touted institution in Brooklyn that's produced some of the best women's basketball players across the country. You've got to imagine, at some point, she's going to be expected to live up to that hype. And I've had conversations with several players on that women's basketball team. I've had several conversations with Trisha Fabry about this. They expect her to be a force. So maybe it's not as much about the impact that Faye makes this year, but maybe it's about what she does in the future. Now, I can argue with the gold rush, and we're going to talk about the gold rush uh, after the next break, but with the gold rush, Faye takes on a more important role. Yes, you're right. I mean, the, she, she's going to be expected to... Uh, gain some chemistry with the players that she will be doing it on the gold rush. But um, I think college is just a whole different beast. So the, the girls are stronger, taller, faster. I think it's going to take a while for her to adjust to the college game before she makes a big impact. Well, let's move on. So with the basketball season just getting underway and the hockey season rolling on, the women's team are projected to go far this year. John, which team do you believe will win their conference? Would it be a stretch to say that both teams could win their conference? Not at all. I, I mean, it's, it's so interesting to me because 
I was on the road to Canada, actually, uh, when the MAC women's basketball preseason polls were being released. And I fully anticipated Iona to be the number one seed. Uh, Demika Martinez returning. Uh, she's one of the best players in the country. She was taken in the uh, mock draft for the WNBA, 19 kills raw, for crying out loud. Instead, Quinnipiac gets ranked tied for first alongside Maris. And I'm thinking to myself, there's no way. There's no hype. way that they're going to play like that, despite the fact that they're in the championship game last year. And I watched them this past week, and I said, you know what? That's a team that might be a number one seed. And obviously, the women's hockey team has proved just that as well. Right. I, I definitely believe it's going to be the women's hockey team, without a doubt. I mean, they're, they're just playing amazing right now. They have, they're averaging 40 shots on goal per game. Chelsea Layden has a, a save percentage of 970. That's unheard of. She's playing outstanding. The but that whole team, also comes down to the defense, too. Defense also. The whole team in general, they're just playing outstanding hockey right see, now. See, with me, with hockey is, I feel like, and I feel like both of these sports are incredibly based upon momentum, but especially hockey. And, and hockey in the sense where you need to be steamrolling opponents going into that conference championship matchup, uh, where in basketball it's more so a half-to-half -half basis. Quinnipiac needs to be dominant in conference play. Women's hockey I'm talking about here needs to be dominant in conference play. We always hear the names like Cornell, like Clarkson. You have to be dominant in some capacity. But we'll wrap things up there, Justin. And when we come back, we continue the winter festivities as we look at what Trisha Fabry's women's basketball team brought to the court against a ranked mid-major. We'll be right back. Welcome to A Sheer Sensation, North Haven's premier cosmetology service, located at 140 Washington Avenue, minutes from Hamden. We offer an array of services from basic cuts and colors to lash extensions and formaldehyde free keratin treatments. We also provide hair chalk and styling for men. When you spend $60, your Q card will get you 10% off. Call us at 203-239-6477 to make your next appointment at a sheer sensation. Wake up, Quinnipiac. It's the morning after. And, you know, part of, you know, how we want to play in our style is definitely playing a lot of players. And we are a senior-laden team that has a roster full of talent. And that affords us the opportunity to play at a pace and a style that we want to be really effective of. We won 30 games with that. And I believe this year, I'm not calling 30 games by any stretch, but I think that can be a real effective way for us to win a lot of games. I think it affected Army in the second 10 minutes of that first half, saw them start to, to get a bit tired. So it was uh, effective for us today, and we want to keep implementing that as we go forward. So there you have it. The gold rush is back. The five-in, five-out substitution rotation earned Quinnipiac a 79-64 win over number 24 mid-major ranked Army Saturday afternoon. The rush was primarily seen during the team's NCAA tournament run in 2013 as it finished the season 30 you're that 30 and 3, Justin. So let me ask you, what do you make of the system's return? Well, I thought I was watching a hockey game last night. <laughs> I've never seen anything like it, but I thought it worked well. I mean, players were fresh. They kept moving. They, they played well together. They, had, they were both in all in rhythm. I thought it was great. It's funny because this was really something that we don't see that much in women's basketball at all prior to what, when Quinnipiac started doing it. And uh, we were doing some preparation uh, before the basketball game in here in the media suite in Studio 125. And uh, the, one of Quinnipiac's Q30 czars, John Small, pointed me up to the uh, monitor that we were watching and said, Kentucky's trying a five-in, five-out substitution. Wow. Not the blue rush, but nonetheless. <laughs> uh, you know, it's funny to me. because We spoke with Trisha Fabry before the season started, and she said that she wasn't anticipating to use the gold rush. They used it a couple times last year, but not for more than a half or so. And all of a sudden, I'm watching this game unfold, and after two rotations, I'm like, oh, <laughs> they're keeping with the gold rush. 
I mean, does that give them an advantage, in your opinion, getting those fresh legs in and out? I think it does. The only thing that concerns me, though, I feel like basketball is more of a game where players really need to get in rhythm. Yeah. And by doing that, I would they need to that. play more, more time on the court. Yeah, and, and I think you can ruin a player's momentum uh, in that case. And, and in order to have rotations like this, you need to be deep. And Quinnipiac is very deep. Right. A lot of freshmen coming in uh, this year. But more than anything else, you have to have players who are deep but also have the stamina to take over if there's foul trouble. And Quinnipiac did have some instances where there were a few players on Saturday who ran into foul trouble. So it'll be interesting to see as they continue with that. Right. And one of the player, players who disappointed in their season de debut was senior guard Jasmine Martin. She only scored four points and only had two rebounds. John, are you concerned about Jasmine Martin's performance at all? It's funny, Justin. I ran into Jasmine Martin just about 25 minutes before we came on air. And I said to her, I said, we're talking about you tonight. Uh, <laughs> what happened out there? Right. And she just said, off game. It happens. And I'll tell you what, I didn't think she had as off of a game as people would say she did because I think she was a defensive force out there. And Trisha right. Fabry said that after the game, too, that she felt that uh, Jazz was playing the best defensive game of her life. Four points, though. You know, Quinnipiac had the people to back it up. Guastella came out. Driscoll came out. Ostergaard came out. They all backed it up. But this is your first team all Mac player. You're going to have to come out there. You're going to have to prove that you're in shape, and you're going to have to go out there and score. Yeah, you're exactly right. But I wouldn't be too concerned. It was just one game. It was one game, but it was against a team that is a ranked mid-major. Uh, not ranked nationally, but in the mid-major pool. Now, coming up, you got uh, this team. What's the name? Oh, yeah, the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame. Uh, and then after that, you've got uh, the, 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 the Roll Tide of, of <laughs> Alabama. So those are teams you're not going to want to come out flat, out flat against. And I'm not expecting Jasmine Martin to put up 30 points against no. Alabama at the Mohegan Sun. But at the same time, you got to come out and you got to show that you're one of the forces on the court. This is also a player who is very – she averages a – 15 points per game, which is ranked fifth in yeah, the MAC. She has a history of but performing well. She has a history of performing well, but the thing about Jasmine Martin that's better than anything else uh, in terms of the accolades that she brings is she's a gamer. She comes out there, and there's not a more fierce competitor on the court than she is. And, and that, to me, is more important for team success, especially when you're running a, a system like the Gold Rush, than actually scoring points. Would you say maybe it was the system's fault? Maybe she couldn't no, get into it because she was she flourished on the Gold Rush the right. first time around, but she also had more help. Well, the Bobcats were left covered even in Martin's relative absence, as I mentioned. Uh, senior forwards Samantha Guastella and Nikolai Nostergaard put up 15 and 18 points respectively, and were forces down low. Is this who Quinnipiac is going to have to rely on all season, Justin? I don't believe so. Like I said, this is a pretty deep scoring team. I think players like Jasmine will come back, obviously, and. I, I kind of want to see how um, freshman Jennifer, Jennifer Fay is going to do. I believe she just needs a couple games just to break in the college atmosphere, and then maybe she'll bounce back. i got to tell you, I really liked the play of Morgan Mance. Morgan Mance's play actually reminded me a lot of Sam Guastella's. And, and the thing about Sam Guastella, this is someone who can shoot. She can post up. She can create isolation. She can get the ball out wherever she needs to get it to. And that, to me, is just amazing. Six foot one, you don't know if she's a guard. You don't know if she's a forward. That, to me, is an asset that you're going to rely on all season long, regardless of how you want to admit that or not. Nikolai Nostergaard is the bigger question for me, because we've never seen Nikolai Nostergaard play a game like she did the other day. Right. That, to me, is something that there has to be an eye on. I, th I, I, thought, I liked what I saw from her. I think... She will continue to, to do well this season. And um, I'm, just more, I'm really just mo mostly concerned about the freshman Jennifer Faye. Okay? More so than anyone else on the team? You think that they have to rely on her more than anyone else? No, but I'm just really, I just really I mean, Val Driscoll, see. we haven't even talked about Val Driscoll. Transfer from Michigan, oh, she had, comes she had in and, and has a great game. Driscoll didn't score much in the match. She was averaging, I think it was just over five points per game or so. Comes in, puts up double digits. That's going from the Big Ten to the Mac. Right. So that's a big change there. I think she will also be relied on heavily. I liked what I saw out of her. Yeah, I, I just, I, I, the only thing, again, I worry is that this team needs a point guard. And, and the gold rush is going to dictate whether there is actually a point guard uh, off of that. Boo Abshire, she's reliable. She's one of the best defenders in the country. Uh, and she's also, in terms of assist to turnover ratio, among the best as well. 
but it's all going to boil down to what actually ends up happening. Is it Brianna Ramos? Is it Brittany Johnson? Is, does someone like Jen Fay step up on that second line in the gold rush? I'm not so sure about that, Justin. Do you think maybe the new system kind of hurts her chances well, at all? Hurts whose chances? Uh, Jennifer Fay's. Jen no, because the, the, the only way it hurts Jennifer Fay's chances is that there's someone breathing down her neck who could take her spot. So if anything, that should elevate. If you're an elite player, whether it's at the college level, at the professional level, you need, and I talked about this with Gartig and Lawrence before, you need someone breathing down your back. Right. And maybe that's what Quinnipiac's going to need as we wrap up discussion here. Okay, well, that will do it for this week's edition of Bobcat Breakdown. Make sure you check us on, out online at q30television.com and qbsn.com. For all of us here at Q30 and QBSN, have a safe and healthy Thanksgiving. We'll see you next time.